On this week's episode, we'll be sharing with you Cleveland's connection to the war bond tour in 1943 that featured the B-17 bomber, the Memphis Belle, and her crew headed up by Captain Robert Morgan. But that wasn't the only thing going on in Cleveland at the time. As it turns out, Cleveland was also the beginning of the end of one of the most famous romances of the era between Captain Morgan and the real Memphis Belle, Margaret Polk. So buckle up and get ready to take to the skies on this exciting episode of History and Relics. The Memphis Belle, a Boeing-built B-17F, serial number 41-24485, was assigned to the 324th Squadron in the 91st Heavy Bombardment Group. The Memphis Belle got her name when her pilot, Captain Robert K. Morgan, and co-pilot, Captain James A. Verness, watched the movie Lady for a Night, starring John Wayne, who played Jack Morgan, who owned a riverboat in the movie, named the Memphis Bell. The famous nose art was originally created by artist George Petty for the April 1941 edition of Esquire magazine. Morgan contacted Petty and got permission to recreate the image on his plane to which Corporal Tony Starcher later completed. Robert Morgan originally intended to call his B-17 Little One after his 19-year-old sweetheart Margaret Polk whom he met in Walla Walla, Washington in 1942 while she was there visiting her sister, and he was in training. Morgan and Polk would later be engaged to marry on September 12th of that same year. Margaret Polk, originally from Memphis, Tennessee, is a descendant of the 11th President of the United States, James Knox Polk of Nashville, and would forever be synonymous with the Memphis Belle B-17 due to her being from Memphis and her relationship with Captain Robert Morgan. The Memphis Belle completed her 25th mission on May 19, 1943. Following her return back home, her captain and crew were chosen to lead a 31-city war bond tour to further continued support of World War II. The war bond tour started on June 16, 1943 in Washington, D.C. and spanned some 76 days. Some of the other cities on the tour's agenda included Memphis, Hartford, Boston, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Akron, Cleveland, Las Vegas, and Los Angeles, among others. Before coming into Cleveland, the Memphis Bell had a scheduled stop in Akron on Monday, July 5, 1943, and while in Akron, the crew met with a welcoming crowd at the life raft plant of B.F. Goodrich & Company and met with his principals there, John L. Coyer and Frank Trockel. Morgan also met with several employees who gifted Morgan a raft while the remaining crew stood looking out over the crowd. The visit to Cleveland took place on Wednesday, July 7, 1943. The Memphis Bell and her crew landed at Lewis Field, and as the mighty fortress pulled around to the front of the NACA hangar, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, they were met with many fans and onlookers. Now let's take a moment to talk about Lewis Field. Throughout the 1930s, Cleveland's Lewis Field had been known for hosting the national air races. However, during this war bond initiative, Cleveland had also been chosen out of 19 other sites to receive a new aircraft engine research laboratory facility to be constructed on fields just west of Cleveland's airport. The need was spawned after Charles Lindbergh expressed concern that engine developments in England and Germany were a threat to the United States. Lindbergh later chaired a special committee on aeronautical research facilities and recommended building a new engine research laboratory. 
Groundbreaking ceremonies for the new lab were held at the site in Cleveland on January 23, 1941, with a dedication ceremony being held in 1943. The stop in Cleveland by the Memphis Bell and her crew for the war bond tour certainly added to the excitement. The site today is home of the NASA Glenn Research Center at Lewis Field and is adjacent to what is now Hopkins International Airport. The Memphis Bell's visit to Cleveland would also include a series of organized surprises for Captain Morgan. The first of these surprises was a visit from Morgan's father and brother from his hometown of Asheville, North Carolina. This reunion took place at the Hotel Cleveland, where the crew was also scheduled to speak on a radio broadcast for WTAM Radio. On July 8th, Stutka, the little Scottish terrier belonging to Captain James Brennus, also took part in the festivities in Cleveland. Stutka was born in England and was living in a pet shop in London when Captain Varenas found her. Varenas and Stutka became great friends and together they helped boost the morale of servicemen everywhere. Stutka also became known as the mascot of the Memphis Belle. The best of these planned surprises for Captain Morgan was to be a visit from his fiance, Margaret Polk, on July 9th. She was being flown into Cleveland compliments of the Addressograph Multigraph Corporation, a major manufacturer of highly efficient addressograph and duplicating machines. The Addressograph Multigraph Corporation was located at 1200 Babbitt Road in Euclid and was Robert Morgan's first pre-war employer after completing his education at Episcopal High in Alexandria, Virginia and the Wharton School of Finance, which was part of the University of Pennsylvania. Robert was a traveling serviceman for the company before enlisting in the Air Force. Executive management at the Addressograph Multigraph Corporation planned a huge outdoor rally at the Babbitt Road site for the crew while they visited Cleveland. When Captain Morgan and the Memphis Bell crew arrived at the site on the morning of Friday, July 9th, they were met with a welcoming crowd, ready to hear his exciting narration of the experiences on the crew's 25 bombing raids over Germany and Europe. Before the start of Captain Morgan's address, out came Margaret to greet him. Robert swept her into his arms as the crowd cheered and the camera started clicking like crazy. Morgan insisted that they get married right there on the spot, contrary to their plans to marry after the war. He even had a local store open so Margaret could buy a wedding dress, but she declined, envisioning a less hectic and hurried ceremony. However, Margaret was mulling over something else leading up to her stop in Cleveland. She would later recall clipping newspaper articles showing women clamoring over one another to get a photo or an autograph from Morgan. She even took random phone calls from women looking for him in an attempt to be with the captain. It was also about this same time that she learned that Robert had been previously married at least a couple of times prior. Captain Morgan went on with a speech, encouraging the audience to support all the war efforts, and especially those of the Air Force. Once the rally at the Addressograph Multigraph Corporation came to a close, it was on to the next stop, Patterson Field, now known as Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. The crew arrived in Dayton on the afternoon of Friday, July 9th. While in Dayton, Morgan and his crew visited the NCR Corporation and also got a chance to meet up with Orville Wright. As for Margaret Polk, she made her way back to Memphis, Tennessee. After leaving Dayton, it was on to several more cities. By early August, the crew made its way to Denver, Colorado and made a stop at the Denver Municipal Airport. The victorious tour would soon turn sour because as Morgan later said, it was too much of a good thing. There was too much wine, women and song and not necessarily in that order. Morgan was staying at the Brown Palace Hotel in Denver. Margaret, who was missing him, decided to give him a call, only to have one of the girls who was visiting his hotel suite answer the phone. Furious and heartbroken, Margaret broke off the engagement and the first opportunity she got, she mailed her engagement ring to Robert's father. Margaret then made a call to her Army Air Force's contact who pleaded with her not to break things off, but the deed was already done. It was also too late to try to keep things under wraps as a small blurb ran in the August 3rd Memphis Commercial Appeal. Wedding bells won't ring out for Memphis Bell and Flyer. There were only a few more stops on the Bond tour for the Memphis Bell and her crew before it came to a close. 
the crew visited some leading war plants and rallied tens of thousands of people to support the war effort all around the country. However, for Robert and Margaret, it was a sad ending to a wonderful romance that made headlines everywhere. Robert attempted to rekindle the relationship a couple of times right after the breakup, but to no avail. However, they did stay in touch with one another through letters, calls, and even occasional meetings. Perhaps they just needed more time, but the war and Morgan weren't waiting. The war was still going on, and Morgan now had other plans, including carrying on with his service career and getting married shortly after parting ways with Margaret to his newest sweetheart, Dorothy Johnson, from his hometown of Asheville, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time, everyone, this one is history. Hey, and be sure to check out our eBay store under ID History and Relics. We're now featuring channel merchandise, starting with our new logo magnet. They're only $5.50 and net proceeds go towards supporting our channel.